you guys can work on that. And then if you want to pay attention, you can always watch it here. So ladies and gentlemen, what I have is f of x equals 2 base e of the x minus 2 plus 4. The main important thing I want you guys to understand is we have to be able to under, at least go back to our general form. This is an exponential where we have our e as our base. And remember e we talked about with our compound interest, where you have regular interest, and then you have interest as being compounded continuously. Right? And we use that formula p times e raised to the rt, where e is your constant representing your continuous interest. So here, we just need to know, remember, it's f of x equals a times b to the x minus h plus k. This is all of our transformations, where remember, a and b, that's going to kind of affect like the dilation or how, how quickly your graph is going to increase um, or decrease. And remember, you this is just goes back to quadratics. H shifts it left and right. K shifts it up and down. So automatically, when you guys look at this problem, you should already just be able to say, shift two units to the right, four units um, up. All right? So everybody should go in and say, automatically, all right, I know exactly what those transformations are. All right, if you don't know those transformations, then that's one thing you should just practice looking at there is being able to describe the transformations. The next step is we need to know what the parent graph looks like. And what I tried to really instill with you, because we didn't do an example with E, but what I really tried to instill with you guys is when you have um, your exponential, we know that unless there's transformations, you are always going to have a y-intercept at 1, 0. I'm sorry, at 0, 1. That is the parent graph of the growth function. All right? And the reason why we always have 1 raised to the 0 is because if you have just a parent graph, b to the x, it doesn't matter what b is. b can be 1. b can be 155. All right? b can be e. It doesn't matter. b can be pi. Whatever you have here, anything or just b to the 0, when I plug in, when I say x equals 0, then we know that this is just going to equal 1. right? It doesn't matter what the value b is. So e is a constant number. It's an irrational number. But it's our constant. So therefore, you should at least have a graph that looks like this. If anything, draw the parent graph. If anything, draw the parent graph. All right. Then all it's telling you guys to do is shift two units to the right and four units up. Well. With e, it kind of gets a little difficult. Because I showed you guys there's two different ways that you can do this. A lot of times we like to do an xy table. And it's always helpful to try to determine at least two points when using exponential. We know this one point. That's the easy one, right? But then a lot of times we can also just choose a point um, any, and just pick another value for x. So we said when x equals 0, got that. We know that answer is 1, right? But then maybe try to find another point that you can just have an understanding to make sure the graph is going correct. So let's do 1. Um, not 1, let's do 2. How about when x equals 2? And the reason why I chose when, when you choose 2 is because what's 2 minus 2? 0. What's e to the 0? One. 1. What's 2 times 1? 2. What's 2 plus 4? 6. So, so guess what? We actually know what two points are. We know we have 0, 1. Um, well, actually, uh, that's my bad. Sorry about that. That's for the, um, we, when we put 0 here, we're not going to get the same answer. But that's going to be, let me try to explain this. You know you have your 0, 1, right? It's going to be on that point. The other thing that you can do is if you can take your parent graph, y equals e to the x minus 2, you can plug in values for this before we apply our transformations. All right? And that's where I was coming into um, our e to the 2 times e to the x. Sorry. 2 times e to the x. You just take your parent graph. No transformations. No minus 2 or no plus 4. Just take the parent graph. And if you do that, you can create an xy table. All right? And here, well, like I said, we, our easiest value would be pick 0. e to the 1 is 0. And then you could actually see, though, that this graph, if you have this um, e to the 0 is 1, 1 times 2 is actually going to be at 2. So actually, this graph. It does not cross at 0, comma 1 like the regular parent graphs because now it's being multiplied by 2. All right? Do you guys see how it's not it's changing that? So, no, what I'm trying to this is the parent graph for all functions without any transformations, right? That's what the parent graph looks like. 
But now, to be able to apply these transformations, the first thing you can do is take the parent graph with none of the translations, minus 2 or plus 4. You don't include those at all. Okay? We take the, so now we take the parent graph just with the dilation. Here, you plug in values that are going to work. You plug in a 0 and a 2. And what you notice is when you put 0 in there, then you're going to get the value 2. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to graph what this function is going to look like. So now we say the graph crosses at 0, comma 2. All right, and then from there, the graph shifts to the right 2 and over 4 units. So you could say over 2 and then up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, the next thing that I want you guys to be aware of is when you guys are looking at this, um, when you guys look at this equation, I want you guys to make sure you have the asymptote written in there. You know the asymptote is at 1, 0. So if I shifted the graph up 4, the asymptote is now at what? Well, remember, the asymptote is not a point, though. It's a line. So if the asymptote right now is at um, y equals 0, now it's going to be at y equals 1, 2, 3, 4. Huh? It's just up because of the k. Yep, exactly. Because watch. Yes, watch. For this example, y equals e to the x. That's that example. This is for this type of graph, y equals b to the x. It's always going to look like this. Always, 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 always. Notice how there's no difference. I haven't done anything, right? Now, though, I'm multiplying it by 2. So when you multiply it by 2, that affects the graph. See how that affects the graph? That changes it. So therefore, now this works for everything. Put in a 3. Looks like something like that. Put in a 10. It's going to look something like that. But now, if you do y equals 2 times 10, it's not going to be that, because now that's changing it, right? So that's why I created the table. And so I could see that, oh, OK, now the y-intercept's not at 0, 1. Now it's at 0, 2. OK, done. Now I have the new y-intercept. Now I apply my transformations, which is shift 2, up 4. Then I just apply the shape of the graph again. Think about that. Yes? Huh? Why did I start where? Oh, because remember, this got shifted. That's the old y-intercept. It got shifted four units to the up and then two units to the right. OK? Um, the next thing I just want to let you guys do is if you're going to do your domain, the domain of your exponentials is going to be all real numbers. Your range is now, what you guys see is you see your asymptote has been lifted. Your asymptote has been lifted. So therefore, your graph is not going to be going below 4. So your range is from 4 to infinity. All right? And you can say the asymptote is at uh, y equals 4. Yes? Um, Usually, I am going to expect you guys to at least apply one extra point. So if you were going to look at this, um, I would, ex I would um, have with the table to be able to at least apply one extra point. I'm not going to go through this because I'm already taking too long kind of explaining going over this. But yeah, you'd have to go and use a different point. So therefore, if you had another point, you could just say, um, yeah, well, just another pick another value that you'd want to plug into either on this equation. And the same thing, you could pick another point here. It's going to get a little different, though, because E is irrational. So no matter any other point that you really pick um, is going to be kind of crazy. You know, if I pick 1, well, E to the 1 is E. 2 times E is an irrational number. And then you're going to have to shift that number over to up 4. But yeah, you can do that, though, right? I mean, let's go ahead and take a look at that. What if I did, if I did uh, E raised to the first power uh, times 2, I get 5.43. 
Let's do 5.44. That's rounded, right? Well, if I shift that up 4, that becomes what? Um, if I shift that up 4, then my y coordinate is now what? 9. And my x is going to be 2, right? So if it was over at um, 1, now I go over to 3, and it's already over all the way up to 9. OK? There we go. Yes? Um, if the plus 4 is the asymptote? Yes, the y equals 4 is the so asymptote. Plus four is the that's not always going to be the case. There might be a reflection that's going on that you don't always just want to say whatever that number is, that's the, that's the asymptote. But since my graph was not reflected at all, my graph was just shifted up four. So yes, that remain would be the asymptote. So it's just shifted the graph four units up. No, the asymptote is always at zero, right? The asymptote always for the parent graph is at zero. It only changes when I'm shifting up or down with that. OK, so yeah, since I moved it up, that's going to change the asymptote. Yes? Asymptote is going to be a line that the graph is going to approach. Um, if we talked about, um, I'll go ahead and do a quick little example. Um, I did this for another class. But ladies and gentlemen, looking at.